Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. I'm Garrett Hartle. This is Reach Out Reptiles. And for those of you who are thinking, Garrett, you look like you are sunburned and filthy today. It's because I am. I spend most of the day sandblasting a truck chassis, but that's not what this is about. Uh, well, actually it kind of is, because our guest today is a bit of a, of a car guy too, Travis Warren, who is better known for his intimate knowledge of the origin of a lot of different reticulated python morphs and his incredible work with his selective breeding projects all revolving around the recessive morph of genetic stripe. Let's go talk to him because he's got a lot of cool information. Okay guys, well we're here with Travis Warren and uh, from Warren Reptiles, right? Re Warren Reptiles? All right, so Travis, uh, Help me remember, how did we actually meet each other in the first place anyway? Um, I think it's when you, back when you worked at Prehistoric. Okay. Uh, uh, I think you hadn't been there very long, so maybe around 2009 or 10. Okay. I don't know, I don't know when you started there exactly, but. 2009, uh, I think, was, yeah, it was the yeah. year that I started, so. So I, I bought a retick from you then I was looking for like a specific tiger oh yeah. I remember now, now was that your first retick uh second second retick yeah but I I always wanted like the perfect tiger and I had sent you like through the store for days of probably <laughs> <laughs> right, I, look for one. I do remember this yeah it was like a uh, very specific look in pattern and color and 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 do you still have that snake? Yep. Wow, that's crazy. Just a tiger male, but it, like the perfect classic yeah. tiger. I've, I've never bred him or anything. It's just I always wanted like the perfect tiger as a pet. Yeah. And he's got a great attitude, and he's always been a great snake. So yeah, I think I searched like five or six months for the right one. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know if any, anybody that's ever sold me a snake or anything knows how picky I am. So it kind of started off uh, a lot of the projects that you got into. Yeah, uh, I bought the Genetic Stripe Tiger at the time. It was uh, supposed to be a Genetic Stripe Tiger from one of like the first breedings of them. It never ended up proving Tiger, but I mean, we all figured kind of, I got on like a super crazy obsession with the whole Tiger Genetic Stripe. And well, you know, it's actually color. like a huge debate, right? In the, within the it's industry. Like it's so, silly. so tigers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's there's something weird about breeding tiger into genetic stripe, and the yep. animal that you got was extremely weird looking yep. for a genetic stripe. They, it's it almost like looks like it would be a tiger G stripe, but mm -hmm. doesn't throw tigers. Yeah. So there was some back and forth with me and Jay later on, but uh, he. He made it right with some compensation with a... Uh, Did he really? <laughs> yeah. That's that, very cool. So that was cool of him, but, uh, I mean, everyone makes mistakes in the beginning of something when something... When if something's brand new, you don't know exactly. Well, and in that in that case, I don't think anyone could have known just how no. weird that genetic... I mean, we would go into it here, except there really isn't an answer. Everybody has a different opinion. I think a true tiger genetic stripes of velvet... And over several breedings of trying different things, that's proven with me, the Tiger Genetic Stripes of Velvet, but it doesn't work how it should. So the odds are wrong. They they like split up. It's almost like the Tigers go over here, the Genetic Stripes go over here, and they very exactly. seldom stack on top of each other. It's like the genes fight and clash. Right. So they, they do not want to combine very easily. And eventually I made them with my ghost genetic stripe, female. Well, and, you know, I think that over all these years, part of the reason that we've stayed in contact is just that you have, you know, very specific breedings and knowledge of your animals and breedings that you're doing, which is always something I thought was really cool. Um, yeah. Like from the dwarf and super dwarf perspective, the stuff that I work in, it's really important to know those bloodlines. I mean, you were tracking that stuff. Well, 
my the second question I always ask people is kind of like, what would you consider your reptile specialty? I think we're sort of going down that <laughs> road here, but I don't yeah. know. You want to just you know we're dying of suspense here. You want to just shout it out there and let us know. Genetic stripes though. Yeah, <laughs> Travis is like the big genetic stripe reticulated python guy. Stuff like you went and talked to people in Indonesia and stuff trying to figure out where these things are coming from. Yeah, I talked to people in Jakarta and Sumatra and all over the place really trying to find where some of the genetics of a lot of actual mutations came from. Yeah. Because no way, there was no general like database to get reliable information and stuff could have been sold back then as anything just ooh people want this now so they'll just they'll just sell it as that right you know i talked to some of the actual people that collect and keep them there and where they found most of the stuff that like like trappers and skinners and all those people were where they're generally finding stuff from so here's the the interesting thing uh Traditionally, the dwarfs and the super dwarfs, they come from Slayer Island, Selayar, Jampea, Kiowati, Kalatoa, Madu, those kinds of places. And according to your research, where has the genetic stripe originated? Well, according to what I found in an island called Madura, tiny island above East Java, but I've heard of several and I've seen pictures of wild caughts from Madura. Now, are the retics from Madura considered dwarfs then? And that's my big question. Because that's from a very different locality than everything else that's established. Right. And I don't know. Is it a true dwarf? Maybe. I mean, the original stripes came in labeled as Slayers, or Salayars, however you want to pronounce it. Right. Which, could they have been from there? Sure. I mean, I've, several mutations have been found several places. So to say the originals weren't from there, I can't say that, but I know... That's true. In yeah. recent times, all of them basically have been found around that Madura. Madura. I, I, I've never seen a 20-foot stripe. <laughs> yeah, so, the original stuff definitely was small. I mean, so what kind of stuff are you working on with the G-stripes? I'm working on every T-positive genetic stripe you can have. So Mochino, Indocarmel, Ghost, all the Clark phases. Uh, I had a Poshet blonde stripe, but she passed. So oh, I had oh. every T positive but one. I just hatched some Mochino stripes, which are pretty neat. You got one. Yeah, yeah. flash it for us. That's cool. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Oh, I love how I love how fine the stripe is too. It's got a lot of that blue ghost color on the belly. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. They should lighten some. Every albino stripe I've made seems to lighten, except ghost, which is kind of weird. But the rennet the ghost, ghost stuff. Yeah. yeah, the rennet ghost has stayed dark. I'm working on a, trying to do two different triple recessive projects. Okay. You gonna tell us what those are? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody with the secrets here all the time. I don't know what the deal is there. Everybody <sighs> comes on, tells us they have secret projects, they won't tell us the secret. I try not to have too many secrets, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you don't ever get, look, you, like, your... My specialty is, like, dwarfs and super dwarfs, right? But I mix all kinds of combos into that. Anything, mm -hmm. right? Your specialty is a morph. More than that, it's a pattern mutation, which reduces all their patterns to stripes. You don't get sick of looking at striped snakes all day long? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like genetic stripes uh, and all the T-positives. The weird thing is, <laughs> whenever I go to Ben's place, I would just stare at the original wild-caught ghost. Just, they, the wild-caught ones, just they have that, like, mystery and like aura about them that i always just stare at them and just get like it's like an out. old it's like an old barn find car or something it has a history to it that you're yeah. unaware of you know yeah, yeah. I, so i just stare at that or or the ghost genetic stripe i just because i always wanted that snake so eventually he let me buy her from him so you got that exact one yeah oh that's cool i i would say that ben was probably my biggest mentor so it was sad the whole 
everything that happened with that. But yeah, he passed away. Was it last year? It was 2017, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, was you know was taken was before crazy. his time for sure. It was a it was a crazy crazy situation there. So yeah, yeah. We all we all definitely miss. It. Actually, that that pair of snakes I'm talking to you about. My plan is once I sell them to uh, donate half the proceeds to charity in his name and stuff like that. Uh, just you know because they carry on his yeah. legacy and retail. But the yeah. the ghosts are obviously definitely what he's most known for in the retic community so yeah, that's really cool i i think that's nice of you he was, he was a great guy and a great friend so. absolutely absolutely I'm, I miss him all the time. All right, so my, my next question is um, just kind of a silly icebreaker thing, okay? Yeah. <laughs> all right. If you never had to sleep again, what would you do with all the extra time? I actually went to school for machining and high-performance engine work. Huh. So that kind of stuff, I tinker with cars more because with the snakes, I've lost time to do that. So that always gets pushed to the back burner. So I do more with that. And then uh, I probably spend more time with my wife. She's really good and she's always supported me with everything. Sometimes the snakes, I mean, anybody with a lot of snakes knows that there's sacrifice with that and it takes time from your, just your life in general. So Absolutely. If I had more time, I'd spend more time on doing things that she enjoys and supporting her and tinkering with cars <laughs> very cool very cool all right good answer i like that i might have to hit you up here pretty soon i uh i want to get a, a vehicle for reach out reptiles i i want like a like the old old navy trucks it would be something that you would for buy. me yeah well you're not that's so <laughs> what i'm looking at is like you know what the old cab overs look like well here i got one right here oh Okay, yeah. My old 1940s and 50s cab over. So what I'm looking is something like this with, uh, you know, the bed cut off, a fifth wheel trailer that I could tow the reptiles and the, and the show booth around to the country and just do shows and have fun and take pictures next to all the national monuments and stuff like that. That stays with your, like, rustic theme. So. Exactly, yeah, pulling everything out of the yeah. trash and making it work for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, we, can, we can talk about it then. I like it. I like it. The last thing I just wanted to ask you is for everybody that's interested, you know, how can we get a hold of you? How can we reach out if they want to maybe see some eye candy from your snakes and uh, or, or talk to you about all the wealth of knowledge you have on your different bloodlines and stuff like that? Warren Reptiles on Facebook. and then Or personally, you can message me just at Travis Warren. So Travis Warren on Facebook or Warren Reptiles. You say you have a business page on there as well. Right. And so we can see all the cool post-shed pictures of those nice Mochino G-stripes if we jump over there? Yep, you sure can. All right, very cool. <laughs> Travis, thanks again, man. I really appreciate you, and we'll let you get back to your wife, your car engines, and the uh, snakes over there, okay? All right, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> awesome, dude. Thanks again for coming on. All right, no problem. Take care. Thank you. Well, before we go, you guys know the drill. It is time to find yourself on our filing cabinet. This week I was sporting a giant vinyl from Dave Massacre of Massacre Reptiles. So big that I had to wrap it around the side of the cabinet there. So thank you Dave for that one. You guys are gonna have to check him out. Super nice guy. You may have also noticed a shirt I'm wearing from Philly Herpeticulture, a company run by Matt Minatola out of, obviously, Philadelphia, who actually gave me a tour of his mind-boggling snake facility. But that's for next week, so you're not going to want to miss that one. Until then, you guys have a great week. We'll catch you later.